Hey everybody, it's Dylan again with Josh Denali Solutions. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Today I'm going to do another video on OpenSense. So I did a couple of videos a few weeks ago where I was going through the uh, how to set up VLANs and subnets and also how to do the very, very basic um, setup of OpenSense when you first, basically when you first install it. So today I'm going to go over a site to site tunnel uh, using with a VPN tunnel. <laughs> so uh, right now we're going to hop straight into it uh, just to give you a quick little layout of um, what's going on here. So I have a CentOS box up here, and it's uh, web GUI'd into one of my OpenSense firewalls, and I have another one right here, same thing, CentOS box, web GUI'd into another, we'll call it a remote firewall, but the entire thing is virtualized on my internal network. So what you'll see here is that I have a 60.106 here, and then on the other firewall, if you scroll down, if I scroll down, I have a 60.107. So really quickly, I'm just going to build this tunnel to show you how it's done, and then I'll go over a few other things as to, I guess, the do's and don'ts of what you should do after it's done. So real quick, we're going to go ahead and go over here to the first one, and with the VPN, IPsec, tunnel settings, and then right here, the first thing you need to do is enable IPsec. Hit save. And then we're going to go over here to the plus sign that says add new, entry, uh, new phase one entry. So go ahead and click on that. And then I'm just going to do the basics here. Again, I know I keep saying basics, but I'm going to do the basics where I just go through. I'm not going to change anything, uh, you know, make it any more complex than it needs to be. So the remote gateway is going to be 192.168.60.107. And I'm going to do the description blank. The only thing I'm going to change is the pre-shared key. And I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Whenever you use one, two, three, four, five on anything, and you know, you know how fast people crack that these days, you still into uh, John the Ripper, and you'll see. So right here, continue scrolling down. Again, you can change this if you want to. I'm gonna leave it the same, and then scroll on down and hit save, and then go ahead apply changes in the top right hand corner. All right, so from there we have phase one set up, and so now I'm gonna set up phase two. Right here, this little plus sign says add phase two entry. Go ahead and click the plus sign. And then I'm going to leave the description out. So the LAN subnet. So the LAN subnet is my very first sub, uh, very first connection I set up on the firewall. So that's my, in this case, is 192.168.120.0. And so I'm going to leave that alone. And then on the uh, remote network, it's going to be 192.168.121.0. And that's going to be a slash 24. So this is the LAN side on my remote firewall that I'm setting this up for. So continue scrolling down. Uh, again, all this can uh, be changed or it can be left the same depending on how secure you want it to be. Some some technologies are older and so some don't support the newer encryption methods. So that would be one of the cases I can think of where you'd use a less secure method. Uh, in this case, I'm using two open source firewalls so they're capable of doing the same things. So I'm just going to leave it default. So anyway, go ahead and scroll down and hit save. And then go ahead and make sure you hit apply changes. All right, so the first, uh, the firewall on this side is set up to a point. Uh, in a minute, we'll come back to the firewall rules and make sure we have something set up there. But right now, we're going to skip over to the uh, remote firewall. So, again, this is uh, 60.107. So, we're going to go ahead and go down to VPN, IPsec, tunnel settings. And then, again, enable IPsec. It's not going to work unless you uh, enable IPsec. Put my phone on vibrate. There we go. All right, so make sure we save that, and then hit Add New Phase 1 Entry. And again, we're going to go down here. The uh, remote gateway is going to be the 192.168.60.106, and we're going to leave the description alone. And the pre-shared key is going to be 12345. And again, we'll leave them all the same. And, and keep in mind, uh, yes, you can make it. Uh, less, you know, you can use a lesser secure method if you have older technology, or you can make it a, a more secure method by, you know, changing AES to 256 or what have you, or even using the SHA 512. Just remember that on both sides, the firewall needs to have the exact same configuration for the tunnel to work. So just keep that in mind whenever you're setting this up. So as we continue, go ahead and scroll to the bottom and hit save, and then make sure you apply changes, of course. And then right here it says add phase two entry. Let's go ahead and add that in. And again, we're going to leave this as the land subnet. That's what we're going for. We want, we want traffic to flow between those two uh, those two local sides. 
And for the network, we're going to do 192.168.121.0. I'm sorry, that's going to be 120.0. Let's run the other firewall. Okay. So scroll down and make sure you, again, make sure you hit this on 24. So scroll down and again, I'll stay the same. And then hit, go down to the bottom, hit save. All right. And then apply changes. So at this point, you've created, you've uh, configured the tunnel, and but the tunnel is not running yet. So depending on how you have it set up, you can have it set up to start immediately, start, uh, you know, start manually or respond on traffic. And so in this case, I didn't change that. I forget what the default method is. But we can go and look. So the default method. So choose connection. Uh, when using CARP, you might want to consider respond only. Okay, so that's for HA pair. Anyway, so right here you can change it to 23. So I use I left it on default. So I'm gonna go down here and hit status overview, and then I'm gonna start it manually. All right. So since this is on an internal network and the the IPs are literally right next to each other, it, all it has to do is go hit the firewall and then come back and say, oh, you're on the same subnet. So right here I'm gonna click the I, and then it's already installed and routed. And so the local, I'm back on the first firewall now. So the local is the 120.0 and then the remote is the 121.0. And so I'm going to click off of this and then go back into it. Sometimes I do that to, uh, as they say, refresh the page. And so let's go ahead and do that. All right. And then hit status overview. All right. So right here. And then you'll see the time increase as well. But you know this going because it's got the SPI going in and out. This guy says it's installed and routed. And then your time, and then I don't have any traffic being generated on either CentOS box right now. They're just being used to uh, web GUI into these firewalls. So anyway, uh, after this, you can after this it gets way more granular. So you can go to the firewall, and then you can hit rules, and then IPsec. So this is where you define your rules. Um, so on this side, it automatically sets up a rule for you. It's auto generated. And then on the remote firewall, if you go to the firewall rules and IPsec we see there's nothing set up here so I would verify just to make sure um, again this is uh, on this side is set up I would not let anything just anything through uh, if you have a um, a remote firewall and then somebody ends up plugging in something on their side of this malicious code then that malicious code can make it over your firewall and into your network so be very granular about what you let into your network over the over the tunnel so make that granular, even though right here it says let anything through on IPv4. Okay, so the only difference is IPv6 is not allowed through, it's just IPv4. And so just keep that in mind. Uh, on this side, you, just, you would just come in and click add. And if you want anything to go through, you just hit add and then you come down here. And so I also generally hit log packets that are handled by this rule. So that way, in a moment I'll show you, that way you can just come down here and save. So now you're letting, once again, anything through and then apply changes. So what you can do to look at it is you can go down to log files and live view. And then you can just filter out whichever side you want to. So I'll do the one zero. So right here, nothing's going through yet that we can see. And nothing probably will go through because it's all, you know, there's nothing, there's no traffic going across the channel yet. So right here we have 121. We see something being generated from there and going over to the see the remote firewall. Yep. So so this is showing traffic going from one of my my CentOS boxes to the firewall. Over um, this is basically showing where I'm web GUI'd in over HTTPS to the firewall. So anyway, you can get more granular with this. This is again a basic video. I know I said a few more extra things, um, but that's the basic setup, guys. So if you like it, please like the video. If you have any questions, please comment. I do my best to get back to you, and uh, if you want to subscribe, I'm going to continue making more content. So uh, I appreciate anything y'all uh, y'all have for me, and thanks. Have a good one.